Hey, hey, it's Gyokyo. I'm back. Uh, I didn't really expect to be back this soon, uh, but I did have an experience yesterday I wanted to share. And I had bought kind of a sports drink, I guess, that I don't normally buy. It was an impulse buy, you know, at the supermarket. And I drank some of it and put it back in the refrigerator. And then yesterday, there's some left, like, you know, maybe a third left. So I'll drink some of this. So I drank, took a drink, took another couple sips. Then I realized, oh, there's only a little bit left. Might as well drink it. And then it occurred to me. I was aware of the first sip, but the second sip, the third sip, just by in a flash. No awareness, just mindlessly drinking it. And I realized, wow, and I was just going to drink it to kind of get rid of it, <laughs> you know, finish it off. And, and that I didn't want to do that, that I wanted to save it. Um, for later and you know it was going to be kind of a warmer day and so I thought I'll appreciate it that much more if I save it drink it later but it was that awareness that I hadn't been aware while drinking right that that reminded me that that's me in a lot of ways um, I learned to eat really fast when I moved to Japan at age about 11 and I remember going, my dad and I would go to this one restaurant and I remember sitting down and this um, businessman, Japanese businessman, Sarariman, right, was um, sitting next to us and he was just, just inhaling his food basically. And I remember sitting there thinking, cool. <laughs> so I kind of, kind of learned to eat like that. I mean, some Japanese people eat really fast. Sometimes you have to. Um, tachigui, right? Like you're at the station and you just sit there and slurp down a bowl of noodles and then go get to work or whatever, right? And so it's not a good habit, I don't think. I used to sit at um, temple, we'd have, what, otoki, kind of the, the, the meal after a service or a special service. And I remember Reverend Seigen Yamaoka, uh, who is one of my teachers, uh, would be sitting, after, this is after he retired, but he came to the service. And so we're eating and he looks over and he says, Harry, you eat too fast. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Keep eating. Um, or I didn't have anything more to eat. I was done. So, you know, interesting. To be told you eat too fast is one thing. I didn't really hear it. I hear it more now, trying to eat better. Uh, not just trying to eat better food, but trying to eat better. Right? That to realize, wow, maybe that's something to be aware of. How do I eat? How do I drink? Uh, what's going on? That kind of awareness, mindfulness. That's kind of a mindfulness practice I remember hearing that. Um, John Kabat-Zinn, right? Um, I forget the, the book. This is talking like, what, 25, 30 years ago and seeing something on TV and talking about how they'll take like a raisin or a peanut or something and put it in your mouth and be aware of the way it feels in your mouth and be aware of, of chewing it and the flavor and everything. It's interesting, this kind of mindfulness training. I think that's good. Um, that's one thing we can learn from Buddhism, right? This kind of trying to be aware, awareness of myself, whether it's physical self, mental self, right? That I'm aware of the way I'm feeling. Maybe sometimes I'm not, very often I'm not, I think. Uh, awareness of breathing. Right? I mean, it gets into stuff sometimes that's just automatic. I don't have to think to breathe. Uh, but we can realize, wow, this breathing that's happening all the time, I just take for granted. This food, this incredible food, I just take for granted and eat it as fast as possible. Don't even eat the stuff I don't like. Or, or eat the stuff, kind of hold my breath and try and eat the, the vegetables or whatever um, without tasting it so that I can get to the stuff I like. Right? And that's one way of eating eat stuff that I think tastes good. But sometimes stuff that doesn't taste good to me might be good for me, like vegetables or certain kinds of vegetables or whatever. So uh, to just eat mindlessly, it's okay, but it's not the best way to be, right? So if you do eat like that, it don't, don't feel guilty about it because that's just going to make it worse. But to kind of have this awareness pop into my mind, right? To, to be aware, oh, I'm not eating or drinking mindfully. I'm not grateful when I'm doing this. 
that's what itadakimas is. That's one of the greatest um, Japanese expressions. Itadakimas. Itadaku is to receive from my superior, someone, my senpai, someone above me. Uh, Japanese has these different levels of language when I'm speaking to an equal or a superior or inferior, right, that we use different language. And so itadakimas means I'm receiving, in this case, this meal from something bigger than me. And I learned from another one of my teachers, Reverend Haruyoshi Kusada. We receive this meal from the entire universe. Right? That this meal is so special. How incredible. Don't take it for granted. Don't eat it mindlessly. Let's express our gratitude by saying itadakimas. But then to try and eat it mindfully and gratefully with appreciation. And often I say itadakimas and then forget. Uh, but if it pops into your mind, am I eating this mindfully? Am I eating this with awareness? Am I eating this gratefully? No, I'm not. That can change me, right? And it changes the way I'm eating or drinking. So just a, an interesting experience, right? To, to, to be given that moment of insight. It wasn't me doing it. It was something bigger, right? To me, it was Buddha reminding me to be aware. Buddha reminding me to appreciate this precious drop of, of, of liquid, of fluid. I also take for granted that I have clean water to drink and that I have um, nice food to eat and, and clean, relatively clean air to breathe, because a lot of people don't. Right? That this isn't something to take for granted. It's not something uh, to just mindlessly consume, especially as the world keeps changing fresh, clean water is getting more and more precious. Uh, so let's try and appreciate uh, what we have as we eat, as we drink. And uh, going through this process, I think, can actually change us. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not into gratitude as a practice necessarily, uh, but I also acknowledge how important gratitude is. And the way I kind of understand it is when I realize that I'm not feeling gratitude, I'm not grateful, then it's like, oh, oh that's, that's a message, right? That's part of the path to me. So thanks. Uh, hope you're having a good weekend and see you soon.